Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome to the test server for War Thunder. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Japanese tech tree today and some of the new arrivals. Namely, the new Japanese heavy tank, the Type 95 Heavy. Here we go. So this is the first true Japanese heavy tank introduced to War Thunder. As you can see, it's a little bit derpy looking. Um, not the greatest tank in the world, I must admit. It's based off the Renault FT, um, sort of designed similar to that, like a giant Renault FT, basically. They've made it bigger, added more turrets, and given a bit more armour. So, yeah, not, not the best tank in the world. It was developed in about 1930. Um, with the increasing threat of Russia, the Japanese needed something heavier and something to, to basically deter attacks on them, and this was their answer. Now, armour on this is not great. Uh, you've got 35mm sort of armour at the front, 25mm rolled homogenous armour at the front as well. You know, a little bit of sort of curving, so you have got a little bit of protection, uh, but generally most things are going to be able to penetrate you in this tank other than the Lava Glacius. That bit there is decent, um, but everything else is absolutely appalling. Um, turret, yeah, you're going to get penetrated a lot. The big issue with that is you have most of your crew in the turret. So as you can see, this has a crew of six. Got the driver, gunner, gunner, commander, loader, and gunner. Um, so there's a few gunners on this tank. Now this is Japanese super heavy tank, so it, it's sort of going up against things like the uh, the British um, Independent, things like that. And as you can see with the Independent, um, it's similar armour rating. So you're going to have sort of similar armour to it. The, the big thing with the Independent though is the Independent is a little bit bigger so the crew are a bit more spaced out and it does have a better engine to it even though it is a bit heavier um, so it's not going to be a great tank now it is quite cool looking but for a super heavy tank it's not exactly what you'd call huge um, it's a bit of a compact super heavy so let's take this out for a test drive in the new Japanese test drive arena so Japan's actually going to be going up against the Americans in test drive, so no longer Russian tanks, which is kind of cool. Um, so, as you see here, the M24, M2A4 um, will fire off our secondary at it, and miss terribly. So, secondary, good penetration on that tank, we can get through without too much response. Now, it's when we come up against heavier armour, that secondary becomes absolutely useless. Uh, let's just switch to the secondary. So, up against a Sherman here, the M4A1, we're pretty much not going to penetrate no matter where we shoot. Um, and that's due to the relatively low um, mass of the shell. So, with the Type 94 APAG, it's got very good TNT explosive to it, but the penetration value is pretty piss poor, especially once you get past the, you know, 500 meter mark to 100 meters. Um, most tanks at the tier you're facing don't have that much armor though, so you are going to get quite a few penetrations. The main gun, however, is a different story. It's got fantastic penetration, but it is yes, very, very slow projectile. But it has got a good reload. So, you are going to get some good penetration hits with this tank, but you are going to find that you're going to need to sort of be relatively close to do anything to tanks with heavier armour than yours. Um, the big thing on this tank is the speed. It's very slow. It's not very simple to use. The other thing is the machine gun. You have a back machine gun. 
so there'll be none to see here at the back in a very slow moving turret. Unfortunately the machine gun at the side of the turret does not work for you. So you've got very slow moving turrets, you're in a very lightly armoured tank, you're going to get at, and a very big tank at that as well, considering, um, you know, a relatively big tank. This thing is going to be a AAA magnet. Um, AA gunners are going to be firing at you all day because you are going to need some easy kills for them. Um, as you see, with the main gun, we go pretty much straight through the Sherman at closer range. So, with this tank, it's going to be a decent tank for collectors, but don't expect to see it being played much. Along with some of the other super heavies, really, it's more a tank of interest than of play. Um, being so small and compact, you are going to get one hit quite a lot in it as well. Uh, so, it's going to be a problematic tank in that regard. For the price, 1,370 Golden Eagles. Again, I can't see many people jumping on board for that. Um, but you can get a much better tank for that month, for that cost. So, let's have a look at Japan's other tanks. Well, we've got new anti-air. So we've got the Japanese variant of the Gepard. Um, bit different in the way it looks. Uh, you, instead of having the radar dish at the front here, you've got one at the top. You also have a secondary radar antenna here as well. This thing is really, really tall. It's going to be easy to spot. Big problem. Um, however, it's got a very good gun, very good rate of fire. Very reasonable penetration values as well. Um, so, as with the Japard, you know, you've, you've got relatively okay penetration value of um, about 63mm to 58mm, depending on where you're firing from. You're going to go through most tanks' side armour, um, but it's not going to be great. The last rounds, sort of the bigger rounds though, with the 120 sort of 10mm, mil, 100mm of penetration are going to be the thing most people use and they're going to be pretty damn good and effective. So it's the same gun as the, as the Capard, but it does have a slightly different armour layout. You've actually got reactive armour at the front here, um, and then 20mm uh, armour behind it. So it might be able to stop a couple of rounds occasionally. The hull armour is pretty decent too. Um, with the angled armour. So you've got about 100 mils of armour at the top and at the bottom, but this spot here is a huge weak point, and that's going to get penetrated very easily by most things. So let's take it out for a quick test drive. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this one because it is pretty well tank now, being that it's been in War Thunder for a bit of time. And it's, um, it's been used quite a lot as well. Uh, so, you know, we, we know what this is about, really. It's very fast, the turret moves in ridiculous speed. Um, this being arcade, it is moving faster, of course, but it's got a decent movement speed to it. Penetration value, you know, gun speed is very good. The gun sounds fantastic as well. And, you know, all in all, it's going to be a welcome tank to have for the Japanese uh, ground forces because at the moment we've got the Duster which is absolutely appalling um, for taking on jets with with this we've got a fantastic arc of fire and very good speed so also the rounds are very high velocity so they travel at a good speed and go where you want them to so next up is the Type 60 so, the Type 60 is an armoured personnel carrier, originally, which has got modifications for ATGMs. So, the Type 60 had, um, do, 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 where are the notes? Find that in a second. Um, the Type 60 has, it's basically a Japanese ATGM. So Japan has one at last. It's got pretty crappy armour, to be expected really. Um, sort of similar to swing fire in the way it looks. Um, 
sort of in that sort of frontal area, sort of that general APC look. Um, however, it does differ greatly from things like the Swing Fire and even the American. Uh, do, 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 which one is the American? Not the Americans have the Sheridan, still don't know. I was thinking of the anti air, so the air defense gun, um, the M163. You know, it looks very similar to, to these sort of armoured personnel carriers. It doesn't have the reactive armour of the American M163 though. Um, German one, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry, I don't play ATGMs much, I tend to hide when they're around. So, the, the um, Rackendier Jagdpanzer, um, the Rackendier Jagdpanzer, um, you know, sort of a very similar look to these tanks but very different at the same time. So the main difference is the ammo is uh, changed by hand. So let's go to our preview again. So as you see here, they're right at the back of the tank. Now the other thing is it's got a very small arc of view as well, very small view, field of view. These binoculars here are actually where the aim for the missile comes from. They're wire guided. Um, pretty decent missiles. Um, they were originally used the uh, KAM 3D wire guided anti-tank missiles and were operated and reloaded by people in the back basically. They generally carried just a single load so that's why you've got two of them up here. Now this one being ATGM predominantly doesn't have the need for troops so you have six rounds in all to fire. Very limited rounds. One of the big drawbacks of this tank. Uh, because it's predominantly designed as a personnel carrier, not an ATGM tank. You have got a pretty hefty crew in here though. You have a crew of five. Three at the front, two at the back. Now, the good thing is, is the engine is in the middle here, which means that if you get penetrated, this should stop quite a lot of shrapnel getting back here. Vice versa, if you get hit at the back, then you guys at the front are going to be alive. So chances are you'll take a couple of hits with this even though it's got abysmal armour. The tracking system is actually mouse with this one, so pretty handy. Let's go to a realistic battle and take it out. So the Type 60 was in use until 2006, developed in 1956. So it's got a relatively long service history. It's a relative standard design for an armoured personnel carrier. But it does have that Sherman-like front gun on it, the 7.7mm, as well as a 50 cal browning at the top. It does have a very limited arc of fire, however. So you've only got a very narrow sort of arc of fire with this gun, as well as the ATGMs. So if we start there, as you can see, that's our firing arc. So here to here not a very big firing arc. When you're zoomed in it is a little bit better but zoomed in you've only got a very small sort of area of use. Firing the rocket, as you can see you've only got that small arc of fire but it is uh, sorry it, WASD controlled this one um, so, in realistic battle, you've got the WASD control for these missiles. So, what can you say about it? Well, I'm not the greatest at firing missiles, so let's try our luck against the T95 up there. So, let's, uh. Well, we've got a hit at least, so that's better than most of my ATGM experiments. Um, always forget that up is down and down is up. So, not a huge amount of penetration on these missiles. Um, T95 is a bit of a control target though because it has got that really thick armour. Um, and I'm sure there's many ATGM players out there that would be able to do a lot more damage than myself. But hitting it right, as you can see, you do get a very decent amount of damage on it. But, as I said, it is a very narrow field of view for firing. Now, of course, firing from outside 
is you do have a bit more area for firing but of course you it is harder in regards because you sort of can't see where your target's going so we've got uh, I think one missile left one rocket left we might be out of them actually so no oh, there it is it's reloaded okay so let's try and hit this shell good there we go. So, as to be expected, pretty much goes with like a knife, uh, a hot knife, and butter with the Shermans and stuff like that. They have got relatively good penetration values and they're relatively good missiles, but WASD function aiming is always tricky. So, I was using an arcade before, and of course, arcade you have mouse aiming. Um, so, the Type 64 anti tank guided missile, it, it's got a firing range of 1.8 kilometers, high explosive mass of course, very low fuse sensitivity as well, and arm penetration is just ridiculous, you know you're looking at 500mm armor penetration. Uh, not much to upgrade on this vehicle of course, um, being an, an anti-tank guided missile, but it's a welcome thing to have. Um, being that this was designed specifically for troop movement though, these are after market sort of missile launchers, so it wasn't designed with this purpose in mind, but it does give Japan an anti-tank missile. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys and found some interesting spots and are looking forward to the next patch coming out. Um, yeah, I will be back with you soon, so this is Screezilla out and I'll catch you again soon. Alright guys, bye bye!